our next guest, often in the headlines for his comments. But today, Milwaukee County Sheriff David Clark is in the news not for what he says, but for what he did. This man took action. Sheriff David Clark is with us. Okay, I know you manhandled somebody on a plane. Tell us all about it. What do you do? Well, this goof took the cabin over like it was his private jet. He's moving up and down the aisle, sitting in different seats. He was intoxicated, cursing and swearing. Uh, it, was a, it was very intimidating for a lot of the uh, passengers and the flight crew on that plane. And so I kept my eyes on him the entire time. Stuart, I did what was instinctive in me. All right, it's to protect people, it's to take action. And I just had to pick my spot. I didn't want to have to uh, be grappling with this guy for an hour uh, after I, I moved in. So I waited to the perfect time and then I, uh, I, I did what I did to uh, Wait a minute, what did, that, you that did what you did. Come on, you've got to give us the details well, here, Sheriff. What did you do? Did you, did okay. you slug him or did you get him on the ground well, and pin no, him down? I was, what did you do? No, I used. I used reasonable force. Uh, when I told him to sit down, he wouldn't. So then I shoved him face down into the seat, pinned him against the seat, and uh, put one arm behind his back, told him to stay there, not, not resist arrest. And then when the, uh, I, I, I told the flight uh, attendant to radio for police at the gate to have the police meet me there, they did. When they boarded, I asked the uh, officer who came up to me, I said, give me your handcuffs. She did, and then I uh, handcuffed him, turned him over. I, you know, I didn't worry about jurisdiction and all the other nonsense. I had to worry about protecting people. But, but Sheriff, I think you're missing part of the story, maybe deliberately, but I think you're missing it. Was he not making racially charged remarks to other passengers and to you? Well, he did to me specifically, uh, you know, after I pinned him down. I mean, he was using profanities at one point, you know, saying, you know, Sheriff, what the blank are you going to do about it? And then when I did have him pinned down, he did say to me, oh, you're one of those kind of niggers. And what he meant was, you know, why don't you give me a break? I'm a black guy. That's how I interpreted it. But uh, that, like many other police officers, we don't care about that. We don't care, care about color and, and gender, whatnot. We care about what the law is. And we care about protecting people. And that's what I did. What's going to happen to him? Well, he was charged with uh, uh, several misdemeanors in the uh, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina area. He's been given a future court date. He bailed out later that day, $500 mm -hmm. bail, and he has to return, I believe, October 28th to, uh, uh, to be arraigned. Next time I fly, I want you sitting next <laughs> yes. to me, okay? I'll be, I want you right there. You know, so that's, now. A, that's, a, that's an interesting thing. One of the questions I had was, where were the air marshals? You know, I know mm -hmm. they don't fly every flight, but it would have been kind of nice to have an air marshal on there that could have either <laughs> backed me up yeah. or I could have backed him or her up. And, uh, you know, um, but like I said, it was very frightening for the passengers. Sure. Uh, Sheriff, real fast, we've got Donald Trump about to speak in Chicago. I'm going to call that murder capital USA. I think he's going to talk about stop and frisk. You're very much in favor of that, are you? Yes, it is constitutional. I don't care what Mrs. Bill Clinton said the other night on that debate. She was wrong. She knows it. And she said it was not effective. It's been very effective. Murders decreased by 80% in New York City under stop, question, and frisk, as did uh, uh, all categories of violent crime decreased 75% under stop, question, and frisk. It is effective. It keeps good law-abiding black people in the American ghetto alive. It is very appropriate that he's doing this in Chicago with all of the mayhem and carnage that's going on in that great city. Can I just take the other side of the coin for a second? Because I think I can understand the resentment of black folks if they are stopped, frisked, questioned by police officers. I know that they're supposed to be due, due cause to stop and do that to them, but at the same time, I would expect a level of resentment from black folks if this is happening in their community. I mean, you take the point? Well, you know what, there's a lot of quiet support for this sort of activity within the black community, but they know they can't come out and say it because they'll be excoriated by, uh, by other black racialists. But look, I understand it, but the courts have ruled on this. That's the thing. In 1968, Terry versus Ohio, mm -hmm. the United States Supreme Court is the law of the land, and they said this, isn't, this is a proper tool to control crime. So once we get crime under control and it starts to drop, guess what happens? Stop, question, and frisk goes away. Got it. Uh, Sheriff, I'm glad to hear about the takedown. That was really good stuff, and we'll see you again very soon, sir. Thank you very much.